Hey, what's up? Welcome to another Why I Use Studio One tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about event grouping. This is probably my number one or number two reason that I use Studio One. For me, it's one of the biggest workflow enhancement that there is. This cannot be underestimated. If whenever I am with friends that work in Ableton and it doesn't have this, it drives me absolutely nuts and it drives them nuts too because this allows me to experiment with ideas very quickly so that I can maximize my potential to find an idea that works in my track because part of actually creating songs is experimentation and the slower you can experiment, the less ideas that you'll get. So let me show you what this technique is. It's really simple. So, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play this track and we're gonna add some hi-hats to it and I'm gonna show you how this allows you to add hi-hats very quickly and very easily experiment with grooves and melodies and so forth and so forth. So let's just dive right in and uh, we're just gonna play the track and then we'll add in the hats and show you how I do that. <laughs> All right, so really dope idea for track. I should make that into something. I don't know why I don't yet. But anyway, so I want to add like a 16th, you know, say I want to add a 16th note hi-hat. I totally haven't planned this out. You know, normally in other DAWs, you might just, you know, like, you're like, oh, I want 16th notes. So you put the grid at 16th and then you're like, duplicate, 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 whatever. That's great and all, but you need to be able to test out grooves very quickly. So the easiest way to test out a groove is what I like to do is I like to merge um, these notes into what's called an event. And uh, I have a custom shortcut for that. If you want to find out what your shortcut is, just type in merge and merge events will pop up. My shortcut is J because I customize all my shortcuts um, and merge events is what you want to use. Now, the really valuable thing that you want to do is you then want to kind you want to um, you want to duplicate the events, but do what's called a duplicate uh, a duplicate shared event. And a duplicate shared event is basically you hold shift and then press D and it will duplicate that event out. And what you'll notice is in the bottom corner, you get this little Pac-Man ghost. And that means that any changes that I make to this event right here are automatically reflected into any shared events. And so you can imagine what some of the benefits of this would be because it allows me to test out groups very quickly. Let me show you what I mean because um, uh, we'll just play with this right away and we'll just dive in. So very quickly, I can play with a rhythm now, you know, because this is an example and I want to move very quickly. That's not the best rhythm, but, you know, that's what we have. So what I like to do is since that I know that there's an A and a B side to my rhythms, typically what I will actually do is I will uh, de-link the this this um, this first kind of shared group. Um, and the way I like to de-link it is I like to hit N and then remerge it uh, and that will allow you to remerge it separately. There actually is a separate shortcut to actually detach it, but sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know why. So I use that technique because it's guaranteed. Um, and then what I do is I color code it like purple, any other color. And that way I know that it's my B side. And then I just make sure you hit N again so that everything's snapping into place. And then just duplicate it out again. So I know I have an A side and a B side to my rhythm. And it's automatically going to be reflected across each one along the way. And so what I can do is I can then play with this rhythm very easily. And so we have something like this. Very easily I've got like a rhythm. Now let me show you where this comes in handy because for melodies I think this is this is for me like a big like a really really big deal. Like let's say I wanted to reinvent this melody even though it's a really good melody. Whenever I want to create melodies the cool thing is, is not only can I link uh, regions uh, horizontally across a track, but literally I can take all these regions up here that have nothing in them yet and I can control drag them or click them, then control and drag. And these copies will be linked to these copies as indicated by the ghost. And then I can literally just recreate a new melody 
And, you know, the other cool thing about Studio One is it shows you can have it display the notes that you're working with. For those of you that are uh, as melodically challenged as I am, it's nice to see the notes. And then we can literally just go in and we can just start painting in notes that are in uh, the key of our chord. And we can just create a new melody. Let's try that out. Again, so now we have an idea for a new melody. Uh, again, you know, for the sake of the demonstration, it's not the perfect melody, but you know, what you can do is again with a melody, you might change it every instead of every you know half bar, you might change it every two bars. So what we do is we create again, we hit N uh, to delink them, hit J to remerge it so that it becomes its own separate unit, and then we hit N again so that everything's you know snapping into place, and then we can just drag this up again. These are linked highlight them, hit Shift D, duplicate across, and now we have a B side to our melody that we can manipulate separately from the A side. And this allows you to do question, answer, question, response formats very easily. Something, some other DAWs like the one I used to use called Ableton does not have, which drives me absolutely nuts because this is this allows you to come up with ideas so ridiculously fast. If you don't have this, you are going to be uh, abated and inhibited from coming up with ideas nearly as quickly when I work with some Ableton friends it's just not as fast as I'd like it to be because I I rely heavily on experimentation and the speed of experimentation is what allows me to build tracks very quickly if I can't experiment at a certain rate and speed ideas don't come as fast because creativity is linked to momentum and for a good chunk of people momentum is linked to the rate and speed that you're working at and that you're coming up with new things so uh, let's create the B side of what we're doing and uh, just kind of fool around <music> I mean, look at this. Everything's taken care of you. <laughs> it's taken care of for you. Like I have, I have the scale I'm working in, so I can only snap notes to the scale that I'm in that I made the chords in. So I don't even have to have the chords if I don't want. Everything about Ableton's uh, not Ableton. God, I hate Ableton. I hate Ableton so much. I thank Ableton for being the first style that I use, but it's it's uh, it's a it's it's horseshit. Uh, plus, it has horrible plug and delay compensation. So praise Studio One. Anyway, so um, yeah, it just allows you to you know play around with ideas so quickly there's so many systems in place that are there to enable you to come up with ideas very quickly and so it's super dope again if you you know you didn't want to like say for example you felt like like retarded and you couldn't make a melody you can literally just do this this is another reason why studio one's great i can just take my chord from up here duplicate it up so that it's shared across them and then apply an arpeggiator to both of them. We'll just do it for one of them because that'll be quicker. We apply the arpeggiator to this one and it's going to arpeggiate this entire chord in the desired way based on the timing here. And like literally I can come up with ideas this way. It's super amazing. I mean, you can come up with ideas so quick. It's like stupid proof, which is great. Uh, and then we'll put that in an eighth and then we'll just listen to what we have. But wait, there's more. So say for example, you like that arpeggiator or there's some notes in there that are pretty cool and you want to have access to them without having to go through, cut this up, remap out all the notes separately, which takes for fucking ever. Other dolls would make you do that. Don't worry, there's a shortcut for that. Right click on it, go to musical functions and not musical functions, go to instrument parts and then click render instrument tracks. This is going to render all the note effects that you have onto the track and you're going to get this. And there you go. You have all the notes that were playing in your arpeggiator and you can go through and modify it. You can use all sorts of really cool things. If you want, you could cut them up into parts. You know, that way, again, the same strategy I showed you earlier, cut them up into parts, have an A side and a B side and then duplicate and merge them across so you can fool around with the way this is playing. And again, this gives you more avenues for creation. And I do this a lot when I'm creating melodies. Sometimes I can't come up with them. I can't play them, especially, you know, recently I had some kind of pretty scary thing happened where I didn't have very good coordination. Um, so it was difficult to play. I needed another way to kind of make 
ideas happen in my tracks. So, you know, once these are merged, I can go through and I can play the idea again. And because in like melodies, typically like the last part of your melody is different. So again, you hit N again, merge it. There is a shortcut to actually detach the uh, connectedness between all these. For me, it's Alt C and we can find that in shortcuts because it always shows the last shortcut you used. It's called separate shared copies, but for some reason it doesn't always work and I don't know why. So I just always rely on the hitting N to unsnap because if it's, if you have snap turned on and you hit the merge button, it can sometimes merge the, the region so it's longer than what it was set at. So I like to hit N, then merge it, and that will give us a new version. And then we color code that a different color, like orange. And you know, for like your last melody, you have it like change, you know, to something else, and maybe like that. Let's listen to that. <laughs> It's just like, it's a really, really cool way of being able to fool around with melodies very quickly. You can do this for every element of your track. You can do it with audio. You can merge audio events as I just discussed with you. You could take like, if you had like some weird baseline that didn't work like this one, you could do the same thing. You could merge it into audio, which we'll do just as an example. And then, so we have like an audio of the weird baseline that could, and then we can like take it and we can just take like one part of it merge it and then create some kind of rhythm that might work and then of course you know we can just kind of cut that up so that it's it looks appropriate make that a different color because white's not a very good color for working with audio region or audio events are linked so again you have this region and you can just not that but that um duplicate it out and mess with the rhythm I can manipulate the audio to get whatever shape I want, which is super cool. So like the possibilities are endless. And even though I may have just massacred the original idea of my track, hopefully I didn't automatically save because I make a habit of automatically hitting save. So with that, Hopefully that was something that you end up using in Studio One. If you aren't using this yet, uh, this is definitely going to become one of your main bread and butter techniques. It's the most, for me, like I said, it's the number one way in Studio One to work with ideas very, very quickly. So just keep that in mind. It's it's the most powerful technique and try it for yourself. Um, you know, it's called Merge Events if you need to search in the shortcuts uh, appendix that there is that you can look through. And uh, yeah, hit that thumbs up if you like this video and let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me some questions. I like hearing your guys' questions, some pretty cool questions out there. So uh, we'll see you guys next time and have fun producing.